The sun is tilted by six degrees with respect to the plane of the planets. The reason for the non-zero solar obliquity has been a mystery since it was first discovered by Sir Richard Carrington in the mid-1800s. It turns out that planet nine um, can actually tilt the sun. The, the fact that the sun is tilted, even if it's only by six degrees, the fact that the sun is tilted, you know, the sun is the most massive thing in our solar system by a huge margin, and it's oriented differently than everything else in the solar system. That is an incredibly strange phenomenon for which there really has have not been that many explanations even attempted over the last 150 years. It's naturally explained by Planet Nine being exactly where we think Planet Nine is, which uh, it, it's one of these mysteries that's now that we think is now solved. That's been such a mystery that people haven't even really talked about it very much over the last 150 years because it's just been so difficult to think of what it is. It has been known since the mid 1800s that the sun is tilted over the years. People have put forth various explanations for it. One possibility is that the sun uh, was interacting with the protoplanetary disk um, via magnetic fields. Um, it's also possible that the disk was just asymmetrical from the beginning. And it's also possible that the sun actually had a stellar companion a long time ago. It was a, a moment of inspiration. Not all projects start out this way. Not all results really come. Some of them come, you know, it slowly dawns on you. We were sitting in Constantine's office one afternoon and we were, we were actually thinking about a different problem entirely, which is how Planet Nine would interact with these very distant objects in the Kuiper Belt that made us originally think that Planet Nine was there. And in just a moment, as we're, we're thinking about it, and we're doing this with our hands, trying to think of directions things are going, I think we both realize at about the same time, it's like, oh, it's going to make the sun look tilted too. And it was very clear from the way we did our fingers that it was going to make an effect. What we didn't know until we did the calculations was how much of an effect was it going to have and in what direction was it going to go. But we knew it had to do something. Planet Nine has been scattered out into the distant solar system. So because it has a lower orbital period that's so long, it has an enormous amount of angular momentum, right? as much almost as the rest of the solar system combined. So even though as an object it is not as massive as Jupiter, it has a huge lever bar. Right? And using that lever bar, it can effectively torque the rest of the disk of the solar system by six degrees over the age of the sun. Next, uh, always next on our list, is find the planet. Um, we think we have it narrowed down to a pretty small patch in the sky that we have to look at. Small patch in the sky still means we need many, many nights on the telescope. Uh, we, we're pretty convinced that by uh, maybe next, the end of next winter, we will have been able to cover enough sky that we'll actually be able to find it. When we find it, we both show that this hypothesis has been correct, we learn about it, but we also see how much of the sun, how, how it should have tilted the sun too, and see if this is the only thing that's been tilting the sun or if other things are around doing it.